installing it into the case. It just makes it a little easier. There are a few things you need to know before securing the tubes to the fittings. First of all, cut the tubes square, not at an angle. And you always want to put these tube inserts inside the tube before putting them into the fitting. Now it's a little bit different here on the radiator. I'll show you how that works a little later on. And you might also want to spread some Vaseline or some liquid soap around this part where it goes into the fitting just to make it easier to insert. And it inserts like so. Just press and push it all the way in. Removing the tube is a little bit more difficult, but they have included a tube and a tube insert removal tool. First of all, let's remove the tube. Press the tool on the tube like so, holding it into place, then just pull the tube out. And as I mentioned before, this tool also takes out the tube inserts. Installing the tubes on the radiator is a little bit different. First of all, take these plastic clamps, slip them on over the tubes. Then go ahead, take the tubes and push them over the rad like so. Once you've done that, just push the clamps all the way down. Then use a wrench to secure the clamps. The next step is to start connecting the cooling components with each other. I'm going to use this schematic to illustrate how this is done. First of all, remember that you should not bend the tube because that will hinder the coolant going through the system. So we start at the pump outlet going into the CPU water block. And by the way, if the water block is rotated 90 degrees, connect the lowest fitting to become the intake. Then continue from the water block, go into the radiator, and you can see the position here of the radiator with the inlet and the outlet at the very top. If you have it like that, you can either go into either hole, and that's fine, and then continue to go right into the fill and bleed system. Now you can see there's a diagram at the top. If you have the radiator turned 90 degrees, you'll need to go from the water block to the bottom part. You can see the tube there on the bottom, and then continue to the fill and bleed system through that hole at the very top. That was with a system with only a CPU water block. Some kits will have the CPU water block and the VGA water water block. Well, in that case you go from the pump into the CPU water block, then into the video card water block, then into the RAD, and then back into the fill and bleed system. Before you begin filling up the circuit with coolant, you have a couple of options. You can remove the motherboard and let the water blocks hang from the tubes while filling the circuit, just to be safe that nothing is going to get over any electrical component. Or, if you feel confident with the job you have done, then you can just continue. You can just pour this coolant into the one liter of distilled water and then proceed with this step. Also, there is a way to test the circuit without using liquid. Close the main valve, connect the two pre-cut tubes that came with your kit to the inlet and outlet of the fill and bleed kit. Open one valve and then close the other. Suck vigorously on the open line to create a vacuum in the circuit. If the vacuum persists, then the system is airtight, therefore leak proofed. Before you start to fill the system, remember to temporarily connect that L wire from the AC socket to the NC position on the relay switch because when you plug the pump in, you need that to be connected. Now I just want to go over here the valves. This is the main valve and these are the fill and bleed valves. This one here should be in the closed position which is open now. Go ahead and close it off and these two should be in the open position. The next thing to do is connect a tube to the inlet and one to the outlet. Then go ahead and put the inlet tube into the coolant, make sure it's all the way down, and then suck on the outlet. Next, place the outlet tube just into that container, but not all the way in, and plug the pump in. And once it starts to go, you can submerge the intake into that coolant and just let it run for a minute or two until the bubbles are all gone and be sure to inspect the circuit 
for any possible leaks. Also, while the system is running and you're still holding this feed bottle, flip your case face up for a few seconds and then bring the case back to vertical again. While most of the bubbles are out of the system by now, there is always a little bit of air trapped inside the main valve itself. So to flush that out, turn the main valve on and off two or three times. Wait about a minute until the last of the air bubbles are flushed out of the system and now your system is fully bled. Next, shut off the inlet valve first, then the outlet valve, and finally open the main valve. The coolant is now circulating in a closed circuit. Remember, there is no maintenance required and no need to refill the system over time as the circuit is completely air free and there is no evaporation of fluid. Now remove the inlet and outlet tubes and clean off any coolant that's remaining in the fittings. Once you've done that, remember to connect the L wire from the AC socket to the NO position on the relay switch and also remember to connect the 4-pin Molex connector from the switch to the computer's power supply once it is installed. This kit is extremely high quality and the results are great, but some installation is required. But overall, this is a kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Until the next time, take care.